I can get something in right there. Yeah, it's tipped out, but it's solid. So this past fall, I decided to take a stab at this Ultra Classic in the gunks called Carbs and Caffeine. And during the second pitch, I came across this particular placement opportunity. Uh, fortunately, I didn't have any problems with the climbing, and I didn't have any problems with uh, getting something in there. However, that did catch up with me later. Pulling! Rock! Rock! Whew. But the placement sparked my curiosity. I looked up the climb on Mountain Project and I came across two comments. Uh, there's follows. The first is by an individual going by Babadapta and it was posted on May 28th, uh, 2015. And they say, the 40 foot section between the two cruxes felt R to me. The only piece of pro is a very shallow number two about 15 feet up and right of the bolt. Then another 25 feet of delicate 5'9 climbing with no gear. A fantastic, very bad otherwise. Now this comment's followed up by someone else, uh, Sean McCauley, uh, shortly after. He says, I just did this climb again. I think the number two is good. Though it is a bit shallow, it's in solid rock, and all the lobes are within the horizontal. Now I didn't have a number two to place at the time, which is why I used number one. And it's not tipped out, but it's definitely at the extent of what I'd be comfortably placing. Uh, anyone that's been around me for the past few months knows I've been stuck in this rabbit hole as to whether horizontal placements are really safe. And given my experience with this climb, uh, as well as the experience of some other climbers, I thought I'd try to provide a more definitive answer to this question as to whether a number two is safe in this placement, um, and are horizontal, horizontal placements safe in general. So to start this off, would my placement have held during a fall? Based on the video, I made a model of the horizontal in question, and we can figure out how deep my placement was based on the length of my fingers and how far I was able to put them into that slot. So I made a mark on here, it's right here, about at how deep this is going to be. And if I make my placement and yank outward, you can see it holds very well. But during a fall in a horizontal placement, it comes out every time. So the question is why? The answer may lie in the math. The traditional model describes how the various forces relate to each other in a standard vertical placement. Now I described this in a little more detail in my previous video, but to summarize, the model allows us to separate the primary forces at work into their respective components. So when we cancel out the like variables, we can see that in the end we're left only needing to consider two constants, and that's the state of static coefficient of friction between aluminum and granite and the tangent of our camming angle. But when we use the traditional model in a horizontal placement, we introduce additional components, namely the stem angle. They can have a big impact on the model's ability to work. The introduction of an angled stem means we now have to separate our fall force into its component vector forces, which is the force acting vertically and the force acting horizontally. Uh, again, we can rewrite our forces into their respective components and cancel out like variables, but only now we're left with three functions instead of two constants. Now, they are the modifier to the fall force and the modifier to the friction force that, on the top and bottom lobes that's caused by the angle of the stem. But we can find an answer if we graph all these three of these functions and explore how they relate with each other. If we first graph the modifier to the fall force, we can see the effect that an angled stem has on the force that our friction force is working against, which is the horizontal component of the fall force. At the left of the graph, when x equals zero, or when the stem angle is zero, we can see that our modifier is one, or there would be no effect to the fall force. This would be analogous to a vertical placement when the force of the fall works along the stem. The modifier trends downward as the angle increases until it becomes zero when the stem is at 90 degrees. What we would like to see is that the two modifiers to the friction force at the top and bottom lobes to be greater than this function meaning we want their lines to be above this one. 
The bottom does just that. At any angle, its modifier function is greater than that of the fall force. It's the top load modifier that yields a problem. Its graph crosses the fall force modifier when x is equal to 52.557. This tells us that when the stem angle crosses about 52 degrees, the force of friction generated by the upper lobe is no longer enough to overcome the force of the fall. In reality, our system is probably not safe when our stem angle is more than 30 degrees, as all the other minor forces and factors at our work are probably more than enough to make up this little difference here. So, that all said, would a number two hold in the same placement? The camming angle and the stem angle are the same regardless of the size of the cam. So where does this leave us? Well, I mean, to be fair, this wasn't a very exhaustive test. Uh, there's a lot of other factors too that I'm not taking consideration. So the uh, friction coefficient between aluminum and steel is obviously not the same as aluminum and whatever rock type you're plugging these things into. Um, but another factor may be the double axle design. If you were to look at a cam that has a single axon like Metolius, you'll notice that when you place the cam in a horizontal and then manipulate the angle of the stem, that the cam lobes don't move, they don't change position at all. That's not the case with C4s. In a horizontal, is as we move the stem up and down, because those two axles change position relative to the rest of the crack that you're placing the cam in, it moves those lobes. Now, I don't know how much of a factor the double axle design has in a horizontal placement, and it's worth pointing out that even in my experience, it's very rare that you can't uh, bury a cam deep enough to make a horizontal placement safe. In experimenting yanking these things out, 40 degrees seems to be that uh, magic number. Uh, I doubt my yank is putting 8 kilonewtons on these things, uh, but still, 45 degrees is very shallow. I can think of only a small handful of climbs where you would encounter a placement that shallow. But this is still worth knowing, if nothing more than to reinforce bearing your placements. Which look, if anyone, anyone who watches my channel knows that I am guilty of sometimes. Uh, these things are not, they are what they are. They're not gluons, they're not bolts. You know, there's not much we can do about that. Uh, but we can take solace in knowing that the people that make these things care very much that they work and that they work well. You know, be safe guys. Climb hard, have fun, take care.